Hey everybody, my name is Michael Costanza. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the Tulane School of Architecture. Today we're going to introduce you to the new Master of Science in Historic Preservation program. Uh, and so without further ado, here's our program director, Brent Fortenberry. Brent. Hey, thanks so much, Michael. And thanks for everyone uh, for taking the time uh, to meet with us today to talk about changes to the preservation program here at Tulane. Uh, as we'll outline today, this is a new expanded program that increases the credit hours from 40 to 60 credits and also increases the time in program from three semesters uh, to a full four semester. One thing that I can't stress enough is that both programs, both the MPS and the MSHP program will be available to every applicant and existing student uh, in the next year. So this is not a, you have to choose uh, the MSHP program. You have a choice, either the MPS or the MSHP program. One of the reasons why we're having this session is because in our last information session, this had not gotten final approval. Uh, we literally got approval the day after our session uh, to advertise the full 60 credit program. So this is a follow-up for uh, all the existing applicants to provide a little more information about what the differences are between the two programs and answer any questions you might have as to the process to switch from MPS to MSHP or what we can do uh, to figure out what is the best, best pass, path for you as you enter in the program or are currently in the program. I should say that um, I'll have my link up here for Zoom uh, meetings at the end of this short uh, PowerPoint, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions one-on-one -on -one in addition. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I just have a few slides that sort of outline what this new program looks like and how uh, it'll be implemented over the next year. So essentially what we're doing is the current MPS, the Masters of Preservation Studies program, is a one and a half year uh, 40 credit program. And so currently students take two semesters of full coursework and then have six credits to complete their practicum or thesis project. With the shift to a Masters of Science in Preservation, we now have a full two year sequence, two full years, four semesters in the program. And so what does that look like? So the first year is core training in policy, documentation, and conservation. And then the real benefit of this expanded 60 credit program is the second year allows you to gain more specialized um, and applied training, meaning more experience in the field, as well as a series of electives and areas of interest, both in the School of Architecture, whether that be in one of our many programs in real estate, design, or architecture, but also outside of the School of Architecture in the wider university. So for example, courses in history, courses in art and architectural history, courses in anthropology, courses in the law, um, law school, or courses uh, in the business school, all those are available to you within this 60 credit sequence that are not currently available in the 40 credit MPS program. So the MPS program only has core requirements. There are no electives. The new MSHP program provides you four elective classes. And so we'll talk about that within the sequence. But that is really at the heart of this expansion is for us to provide you more specialized training, more high impact learning experiences, both here in New Orleans, but also throughout the Gulf Coast, the South, throughout the Caribbean uh, and the Atlantic world. We're also expanding our offerings in the summer. And so one of the things that we'll have is a new building trades and conservation summer program in partnership with the National Park Service, which we'll offer this summer as a one month high intensive training program. And we'll also have new classes next summer in disaster recovery and mitigation for historic resources. Now, these two new areas and courses are on top of our already existing uh, research and teaching focus in digital documentation, in conservation and social and heritage justice. 
So again, really the 60 credit program allows us to build on the strengths of the core classes currently within the MPS program, but provide you a more expansive training. Again, this places us in a better position to give you the training and the skills that you want and need to enter the preservation field from day one after graduation. So let's go ahead and look very briefly at what these four semesters look like. The other thing to keep in mind as well is that in the current sequence, uh, the course loads within semester one and two are 17 and 18 credits respectively. As you'll see, as you'll see here, we have brought the course loads down per semester to 15 credits to allow you a little more breathing room, a little more time to take um, um, a little breather within your um, sequence of classes to again, better provide you with high intensive, high impact training. So in semester one of the new sequence, we have our introduction class, we have our studio one, we have New Orleans architecture, and then a new course that we're offering that is currently not in our sequence in archival and historical research methods. And what this course will do is it will prepare you to do much of the documentary and archival research that is a part of every preservation job, whether that be looking in archives, whether that be looking at chain of title, essentially providing that historical framework to understand from a documentary point of view, how buildings have uh, changed ownership, uh, have been assessed um, over time, and how they fit within that archival um, line of evidence. And so that's a new course that will be existing in semester one relative to our current sequence. In semester two, we have two new courses that again, build on the strengths of our program that are not currently offered. In semester two, there's a six credit architectural conservation lab, which provides you with an understanding of how to do documentary um, conditions assessment, mitigation and management plans. It's all hands-on, all based in the field that will be based here in our new preservation lab uh, here in McAllister Hall. You'll have your second studio in urban conservation, uh, our existing course in American architecture, and then a second new course in semester two that is a professional development course. What this will do is this will introduce you and get you starting to think about how you begin to build your portfolio, how you begin to build your resume and CV and um, application letters and materials, and will connect you with leaders in the field in New Orleans and the Gulf South to start building your network. And that's another thing that's really important within this expanded sequence is when you're in graduate school, building your professional network as you move through a program like this, that's a professional program, is critical to having your name out there within the preservation world. And so the, the professional development course will connect you with these leaders regionally and internationally, again, so you can start to build your professional network as a professional, as someone who is gonna leave this program from day one and get a job in the, in the sector of preservation that you're interested in. So you'll notice going from 17 and 18 credits respectively to 15 and 16 credits, um, that provides you with much needed more time hey, to work. Hey, Brent. You yeah. cut out. You cut out for a minute there. Sorry, my my screen fell asleep. Um, and actually, the internet's going out here, even though I'm hardwired in. So, um, we'll so the last thing I heard it was 15 to 16 credit hours, I believe. I forget the point you were making. Can you see the screen again? You can see the screen. It's uh, you're in presenter mode. Excuse okay. us while we have technical difficulties. When the internet shuts off here, that, that, uh, that, uh, how about that? Is that better? Now we're in presenter room. Yes, continue. Yeah. So, so uh, apologies for that. Um, the difference is, is that between 17 and 18 credits uh, in the current sequence in the NPS program here, 
you have 15 to 16 credits um, within your first year. Now, as you move into the summer, you'll notice in semester three, you have an internship requirement, and that is done between semesters two and three in your sequence between years one and two. And essentially what that internship is the follow-up to the professional development class that allows you to, again, find placement within the preservation workforce, either here in New Orleans or elsewhere, to again, start building your professional experience. And so we, we put those credit hours on semester three because the way that tuition works at Tulane is that we don't have to charge you for those three credits in addition as we would if it was charged in the summer. So that's why um, it's in semester three. The internship over the summer is also the springboard for you to be collecting your data, collecting and building your portfolio as a part of your capstone thesis or practicum project. So once you complete those three credit hours of an internship over the summer, that shows up here in semester three in the fall, we then have several new courses that are again, additions to the current MPS program. The first is a preservation research seminar. What that does is that trains you and walks you through the sequence of how you undertake professional and academic research in preservation. It teaches you about research methodologies. It teaches you how to, how to uh, undertake and write a literature review, how to create research questions, how to present research data. And all that research seminar does is it takes that data that you've collected in the summer as a part of your internship and begins to build the, the nuts and bolts, the core elements of your thesis and practicum in the fall of year two. And so again, what that does is it gives us and it gives you much more time to develop your ideas within this research seminar. And when you complete this research seminar, you will have a 50% rough draft completed of your thesis and practicum moving into your final semester. Again, that is a stark difference to how the MPS program currently asks you to write your entire thesis and practicum in the fall semester, all in one fail sweep. What we're trying to do with this new research seminar is provide you with the tools to be able to undertake impactful research and provide you more time to think critically about how your work engages and has impact in the preservation sphere. Additionally, our environmental law class, which focuses on preservation law and policies in semester three, a shift from uh, the current course, which is preservation technology to conservation technology that builds on the lab that's in semester three. And then you have two elective courses in, in semester three. We'll talk about some of the elective courses that we offer in the preservation program. But again, those two courses can uh, be anywhere in the School of Architecture or within the wider university. So courses in anthropology, courses in history, courses in at, uh, African diaspora studies, courses in uh, economics, English, um, anywhere within the university that again, will build your experience and build your training in the area of preservation that you have. And in semester four, you have six credits of thesis and practicum. In that, again, you're working with your thesis and practicum committee. You're meeting with them once a week. You're working through drafts, giving presentations to the entire cohort of preservation faculty and students once a month. Again, building this sort of research network and feedback for you to provide a impactful thesis or practicum. And why that's important is because when you graduate from this program, your thesis or practicum should be something you can put down on the table to an employer and say, these are the skills. These are how I operationalize these skills. This is what I can do. And so by providing this writing and review sequence over semesters three and four, we're providing more critical feedback, more critical thought, and we'll have a you'll be in a much better position to have a thesis and practicum that will get you that job that you want. In addition to those six credits of thesis and practicum, you will have two additional elective courses. And so again, those can be anywhere within the School of Architecture in the preservation program or within the wider School of Architecture. That full four semester sequence 
comes to 60 credits. Some of the electives that we, that we will offer in the preservation program are advocacy, economics and practice of preservation, international field studies, two new courses in digital tools and preservation, which will be offered in a Baymester. That will introduce you to elements of laser scanning, photogrammetry, 3D modeling, as they apply to preservation, architecture in the built environment. A new course uh, called the Heritage Risk Lab, which is an international course that will take you to a context in which heritage that's, that is at risk and you'll work with stakeholders to develop management plans and sustainable solutions for their at-risk heritage. And then a new course in architecture, identity, and race in the historic built environment that will introduce you to challenges of how the past is represented and what preservation can do to represent the past more equitably, impactfully, and inclusively in the 21st century. These are just some of the courses that we'll offer as electives. And one thing to keep in mind is that while now we have a two-year sequence, you can take some of these summer classes in addition to your internship hours and have fewer classes to take in semester three and semester four, meaning that you can spend more time working on your thesis and practicum, or you can take additional courses, which would come at no cost within um, Tulane University and the School of Architecture. As we've mentioned before, but I just wanted to reiterate, Merit Aid is available with every application. There are research and teaching fellowships available as well as student worker positions available. And there's also paid positions within the preservation field of New Orleans. And so the cost of this program, relative from the MPS to the MSHP, we're really only talking about time-wise one additional semester here in residence um, at the university. We'll also be able to offer additional merit aid uh, as a part of the MSHP program, because we're acknowledging that the sequence of classes and the number of credit hours are additional uh, to what the 40 credit MPS program uh, has. And so there are lots of opportunities for financial aid and fellowships and ways to offset the cost of our graduate program. So if you have any questions, many of you have my Zoom appointment link, you can scan this QR code. Uh, you can email me. One last thing that I'll say, if you, if you need more information, you can easily go to the uh, Tulane School of Architecture website. I'll share my screen again. That provides you with the breakdown of both the Masters of Science and Historic Preservation and the Masters of Preservation Studies. I will say that the Masters of Science in Preservation is the gold standard for degrees in preservation in this country. And it really acknowledges the increased hands-on learning lab components that are in addition to the current sequence of courses in the Masters of Preservation Studies. And so by having a Masters of Science in Preservation, it signals to employers and the field in general that you have rigorous, high impact and innovative skills within the field of preservation that we are excited to be able to offer here at Tulane next year. That's all I have. Happy to, uh, Michael's gonna follow up with the application process and then we'll field some questions. And I apologize for the, um, for the technical snafu here. The internet went out uh, here in McAllister Hall. It's all good, all good. So I just wanna to speak to three different populations that we have here. So, uh, First, if you are interested student, you haven't applied, um, you're not currently a student, you're just interested in applying, um, and you want to apply for the Master of Science in Historic Preservation, all you have to do is create a new application. We have the Masters of Science in Historic Preservation application open, um, and you can go through the process normally. Um, if you are a current applicant um, and you've applied to the Master of Preservation Studies, and you wish to switch your application over to Master of Science in Historic Preservation, let me know. I can do that on my end um, and just transfer your application. You won't lose any information. You won't have to start over. Um, it's merely just going to change the application and all your information is going to stay there. Um, and if you're a current student right now and you are considering switching from 
NPS to MSHP, uh, simply reach out to, to Brent and he will uh, do that process on, on the registrar side of things. Um, so that's kind of the different processes for how you apply for Master's of Science in Historic Preservation. What we wanna do right now is reach out and answer some of the questions that you guys may have, guys and girls may have. Um, so feel free to use the Q&A function or the chat function and send your questions in to us right now, um, and we'll be happy to answer those. And while folks are potentially typing questions, just to reiterate, the MPS and the MSHP program will run concurrently next year. So both of those programs will work in sequence for incoming students, as well as those students who are currently in the MPS program and are interested in switching over. We have adjusted the sequence and offering of classes so that we can run for one year. Uh, hopefully I won't go too much more gray doing both of those at the same time, um, both the MPS and the MSHP at the same time next year. So remember, if you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A function, the chat function. Um, you know, I think the students, the biggest question I've heard from students is just about timing. Um, and so, uh, and I think you addressed that well. So the first question I see here, will existing MPS merit scholarships be expanded to encompass the MSHP additional semesters? Yes. So if... If you are currently in the MPS program and you are interested in pursuing the MSHP program, essentially your merit aid will be reviewed and expanded to encompass those four uh, semesters. So for those of you currently in the program, as many of you know, the third semester, you're a part-time student. And so essentially of your semester allocation for merit aid, you get half of that. So essentially 25% of your full year year with this expanded sequence you will actually become a full-time student over two additional semesters and so we will review your current merit aid application and allocation and we will reassign that to reflect two additional full-time semesters within the program yes and for all the incoming students uh the merit offers will encompass the the, the two-year program so it will be a mayor offer for MPS will be different from a mayor offer for MSHP. Good and that question. really reflects the additional time that you will be in the program. So it will be additional merit aid to reflect the fact that you're in the program for additional um, um, additional um, time. Yeah. Brent, is there a specific undergrad major or minor required or preferred for this program? No requirement and no preference. I, I think, you know, one of the exciting things about preservation is that it really is this bridging discipline within universities. And so we currently have students and have had students within our program who are history degrees, architecture history degrees, anthropology undergraduate degrees, preservation degrees, architecture degrees, design degrees, real estate degrees. Um, it really, it encompasses a broad array, environmental studies. And so one of the things that is a exciting aspect of preservation is that because it is so problem oriented, because it is so impact oriented, having a diversity of students within a cohort and a diversity of professionals in the field that come at preservation from different backgrounds, it allows us to leverage the strengths of everyone to solve problems. And so there is no undergraduate preference or degree requirement. Don't let us being in a school of architecture scare you off. I don't have a degree in architecture. I don't have a degree in design. I have degrees in preservation, archeology span and anthropology. So um, we are situated within a school of architecture here at Tulane because Tulane School of Architecture focuses on the built environment encompassing aspects of the historic built environment, new construction, real estate, design. And so we fit within that patchwork of how we understand the built environment. But we do not require or do not provide preference 
to, to any particular undergraduate major or, or um, area of study? Uh, the question, will there be a dual degree with MARC and MSHP? Yes, there will be for both MARC three and a half and MARC two year programs. And that course uh, outline is currently being worked out and should be up line, online in the next coming weeks. We are waiting to get final approval from the architecture faculty of these expanded sequences. What is nice, what we're looking at right now is that essentially the advanced offerings for the architecture degree. So the MR dual degree in preservation that provides you advanced standing, that will be a two plus one, meaning that you will be able to receive your MR in the first two years and then just one additional year for your MSHP degree. That saves you a full year in the School of Architecture. For the three and a half years, it's even it's even better in the sense of you will actually only be required to stay an additional single semester within that sequence because we can plug in electives throughout your three and a half years in the architecture program. And so you're actually getting much more value for your time and money by doing the MSHP dual degree because it's a shorter sequence with higher, higher and uh, more tailored skills for what you want to do. And really, within the dual degree program, those of you who are interested in taking additional studios, whether that be within the architecture program, within the design program, the small center, that will provide you more studio experience within your sequence that you would not all otherwise get within the existing dual degree program. Yeah, and, and I think right now we'll, we'll take our, our last question. So are there any additional requirements more generally for the MSHP versus the NPS? Nope, absolutely not. Um, your background, your application for the MPS will be identical to what the MSHP is. It's just a matter of choosing which track that you want to go down. And so um, there's no difference in terms of the application. We ask for um, a letter of intent. We ask for a research writing sample portfolio. We ask for transcripts. And letters of reference. There's no difference between those two degrees. Yeah. Um, and there's a question here about, uh, you know, if you're an English creative writing background, uh, is that a, a hurdle for you for applying to this degree? You know, um, just to speak to that, no, it, it goes back to, you know, you're bringing a different aspect of, of thinking to the program. Um, and I think that's actually going to help you as far as like writing research or, or uh, thinking logically through these, these problems of preservation. Brent, do you have anything to add to that? I will say that, again, one of the things about preservation that is exciting is, you know, I came back and did my preservation degree after I finished my PhD in archaeology. And so I was sort of a late, um, a late arrival into the preservation world. I had completed my PhD in archaeology and was a faculty member at another university. And so we have students within our program that are right out of undergrad or they've worked in the field and come back and wanted to change their career path in preservation. It really is something that is exciting and rewarding. And so do not be concerned uh, if you have graduated and are a few years out and coming back to school. That's something that I encountered myself. Um, and it really is, um, we really treat our cohorts um, as, as teams of professionals you are my junior colleagues when you're in the program. And so it does not matter if you're right out of undergrad or if you have been in, in the workforce for several years. Um, there's no difference in terms of hopping back into to getting back up to speed in terms of being in a graduate program. Yeah, so uh, with that, we'll go ahead and conclude our info session. We wanna thank you guys for, guys and girls for coming out today. Um, if you have any questions later on, uh, feel free to reach out to uh, Brent or myself. Uh, our contact information will be sent to you in a follow-up email. Um, so you all have a, a, a great uh, night, and um, we look forward to seeing your applications. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care.